Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is April 3rd and we're trying something a little different this morning. We are kicking off the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance phone bank today and it's going to happen this morning. Right now more than 100,000 people are waiting for a life saving organ transplant and just last year more than 1900 children were saved thanks to the generous gift from donors. But the reality is there are more than 2100 children on the national transplant waiting list. Stephanie Serna is also live. She's here this morning over in Studio Bay B where we're kicking things off this morning. Steph, I don't know if we've ever done this kind of thing on the early show before. And no, we I don't think we have in my memory. I mean, we later in the day, but we have some very brave people who woke up early with us. Uh, these are representatives with the Texas Oregon Sharing Alliance. Thank you guys for being here so early and they are here early to take your phone calls uh, if you would like to be on the organ donor list. That number again is 210-351-1363. Now everybody has a short a story to share, but we're going to share one of our representatives who we've interviewed many times in the past. And uh, her name is Lolly. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lolly. So in 2003, Lolly Gomez lost her only daughter, Yvette, in a motorcycle accident. She awoke to an early morning phone call from her daughter's best friend trying to explain what happened. The difficult truth was that the injuries her daughter received left her clinically brain dead and through the gift of organ donation Lolly's daughter saved five lives as an as advocate for organ tissue and eye donation Lolly points out the significance of becoming a registered donor by sharing her story with others I would like to encourage the public to please sign up to become a registered donor Now, Lolly does admit that her personal story is painful, but she finds comfort in helping potential donors understand that their decision to give the gift of life lives on as a blessing to the recipients who are waiting for their second chance at life. And again, you should probably see that number on your screen right now, 210-351-1363. Now, we understand it's a very personal decision to become an organ donor or for your family members, but this is what this is about, to so take your questions and not only to get registered but if you have concerns I mean we have these nice representatives up early who would like to share with you so you have all the information you need to know to get registered and save someone else's life back to you Mark all right Stephanie thank you very much folks again the line is live right now 351 1363 we will be taking your calls all morning long all the way through 10 a.m. this morning right here on GMSA and GMSA at 9 and we'll be discussing this throughout the morning and have that number for you again right now it's 503 and Mike Ostrade joins us now Mike it's cold out there this morning who would have thought using the words cold and chilly in April in the same sentence but yeah it is definitely chilly out there right now we're not done cooling off as of yet we are at 48 degrees right now so we've been kind of fluctuating a few degrees but drop down too just in the past hour that dew point that bottom number is down to 40 right now so in theory we could drop down that far we're not going to but we can still cool off because we don't have much of a breeze out there and you can see that we do have a lot of clear skies and then a huge warm-up we're going to be you know you a lot of times we talk about if you gain 30 degrees throughout the course of the day that's a bunch we're going to be getting 35 on average all the way up to 80 pretty much right where we should be this time of year maybe within a degree or two yeah an absolutely spectacular day like yesterday was without the wind aquifer unfortunately took a pretty decent hit yesterday down six tenths of a foot and the allergens um you may not want to just you know look at this one oak yesterday 21,380 highest reading so far obviously needless to say we are definitely in the heart of the oak season right now look at some of the temperatures around the area we're at 42 up there in Kerrville yeah that's not chilly that's just cold 48 here in town 46 in Valverde and uh, 47 is Castroville as well as Hondo yeah only a handful of 50s left on the map as of right now. But like I said, it's going to warm up very quickly. Chilly mornings, beautiful afternoons. Today, tomorrow, as well as Friday, same situation, cut and paste, if you will. Saturday, more clouds move in here, a little bit more in the way of humidity. And we do have a chance for some rain late with the front moving on through here. Then Sunday, we will have some clearing. A very short lived little shot of dry air comes on in. That won't stick around long. Humidity comes back in, and there are going to be plenty of clouds around on Monday. It's not going to be like those low gray socked in kind of kind of day but 
not the best eclipse viewing weather. I was talking to somebody yesterday and said, boy, I wish we could remove the eclipse to today because this is perfect out there. But anyway, we'll talk more about the uh, Monday situation coming up in just a couple of minutes. Also, a glasses giveaway that's coming up as well. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike. Yeah, already off to a busy start here for our drivers on the northeast side. So usually we see a lot of construction going on here at 35 at Topper Line. We have got a, a pretty big crash out here that is blocking down several of the main lanes here. This is going to be 35 north at Topper Wine. So our construction usually 35 South. This in fact is a crash being reported 35 North, at least two main lanes blocked here in this area and traffic is being diverted off to Pat Booker Road right now. As we take a look at our maps, still seeing some delays there from our traffic situation on the southbound lanes with construction and then now no here with the northbound traffic there due to that crash. We'll continue to get more information as we make our way through the morning. We have a car fire being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department, Callahan off of a loop 410. That's going to be off the highway there. So hopefully we get things cleared out in that area. And we have ongoing construction taking place Northwest Military at loop 1604. But the biggest thing we're seeing right now, crash right now, 35 northbound, Topper Wine, at least two main lanes closed, traffic being diverted off to Pat Booker Road. Mark, back to you. All right, it's a busy morning. Thank you very much, RJ. Let's get to the headlines. A trial underway for a man accused of killing someone during an argument nearly three years ago here in San Antonio. Tavares Anderson was charged with murder after police say he shot and killed Malcolm Everett in July of 2021. It happened at an apartment complex on the northwest side. Anderson's attorney argued the killing was in self-defense. The trial is expected to last till the end of the week. A neighborhood in shirts facing the pains of growth. Last night, City Council heard a request to change the zoning for a currently empty plot of land so a developer can build, a, build home rentals there. The 43 acres is on Savannah Drive between FM 1518 and Shirts Parkway. Homeowners around that area have collected 500 signatures against the request because they worry too many homes will create more traffic problems in the area. Following a vote late, late last night, the Shirt City Council ultimately moved to deny that request. Traffic is our big issue because all the traffic will come in and out of right here, dump onto Savannah. We just can't handle it. With the City Council's vote, the proposal dies. The developer was looking at building nearly 300 single family detached rentals. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake rocked Taiwan overnight, the strongest tremor to hit the island in a quarter century. It killed at least four people, injuring dozens and sparking a tsunami warning for southern Japan and the Philippines that was later lifted. Many others remain trapped in the capital, Taipei. Tiles fell from buildings while debris fell from some building sites. Schools evacuated students to sports fields, equipping them with yellow safety helmets. Some also covered themselves with textbooks to guard against falling objects after aftershocks continued. 23 million low income households could soon lose a subsidy that provides for their Internet service. The Affordable Connectivity Program is expected to run out of money at the end of this month. The subsidy gives households up to $75 off Internet bills each month starting in May. Internet companies will have the option to offer party partial rather discounts using any remaining federal funding. While there is some bipartisan support to continue the subsidies, lawmakers have not passed an extension. For now, officials have stopped accepting new applications and enrollments. It's 508, 49 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll check in with our Texas Organ Sharing Alliance phone bank this morning. We're showing you just how important a life-saving organ donation can be. Stay with us and help us save some lives this morning. We'll be chatting with Stephanie Cerna in KSAT Studio B in just a matter of minutes. But outside with live cam, you missed the top of the newscast of Mike's update. There's a lot going on in weather this morning because it's cold out there. He's tracking temperatures and again, a big accident on northbound 35 at Topper Wine. 512, welcome back. Fiesta is still more than two weeks away, but work has already started for one of the biggest events, the Battle of Flowers. Our John Paul Brajas got an inside look at how local bands are preparing. The floats are almost ready, and the bands are already warming up for the 2024 Battle of Flowers Parade. I was absolutely amazed. They did a wonderful job with this, and uh, it looks amazing. Students from 10 San Antonio area high schools are rehearsing for their big moment. I just feel grateful to be in this spot and be able to be on a float, and I just think it's something that it's extremely special, like I said, and I feel blessed to be here. For many of those participating, this is a chance to have a part in a parade they've grown up watching. 
you know, it's our holiday. We really made it our own and we celebrate it in a big way and I think that's awesome. This year's theme for the public school float section is celebrations in San Antonio we love. From Fiesta, of course, to New Year's Eve and Dia de los Muertos, just to name a few. Catherine Bishop with the Battle of Flowers Association says this is an opportunity they want everyone to have. Every four years they rotate in so that hopefully all their bands, all their cheerleaders, all their spirit groups and student council can participate at least for one year while they're in high school. That's why the 2024 parade will feature 10 schools instead of the usual nine. Bishop explains as the city grows, so does the parade. What should people expect come Battle of Flowers? Uh, I mean, they should expect a show from us. <laughs> and we sure hope to get one. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. 513, 49 degrees on your Wednesday morning. Just ahead, we'll check in with the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance phone bank this morning. It is up and running. We're going to show you how important a life-saving organ donation can be with one of the first ever early morning show phone banks I think we've had here at KSAT 12. We'll check in with Steph coming up. To me, Harlem is home. But home is also your body. Last one, everyone. I asked myself, why doesn't Pilates exist in Harlem? So I started my own studio. Getting a brick and mortar in New York is not easy. Chase Inc. has supported us from Studio One to Studio Three. When you start small, you need some big help, and Chase Inc. was that for me. Earn up to 5% cash back on business essentials with the Chase Inc. business cash card. Make more of what's yours. Oh, what a good time we will have. You can make it happen. Dietary supplements from Volterra for healthy joints. When you smell the amazing scent of Gain Flings, time stops. And you realize you're in love. Steve! With a laundry detergent. Gain Flings, seriously good scent. Hi, good morning. We are back with the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance and they are here waiting for your phone calls to explain organ donation. If you have any questions and if you'd like to become a donor, um, I have with me right now, we have uh, Chad Carroll with Donate Life Texas to talk to us a little bit more about this important decision that you may make. And uh, Chad, first of all, tell us a little bit about Donate Life Texas. Sure, Donate Life Texas is the nonprofit organization stood up in 2005 uh, with the Texas State Legislature Legislature. And our mission is really twofold. First is to run and operate and manage the Texas um, Organ, Eye, and Tissue Donation Registry. I think most people know us and you'll get your driver's license renewed. Do you want to register as an organ donor? We run that registry. And our second mission is to educate and inform Texans on all things related to donation in the spirit of getting them to, to register to save and heal lives. And then, you know, some people may um have gone and already you know got their new uh, driver's license is there any way maybe they ha you know they were thinking one way when they got their driver's license and you know maybe they want to go ahead and become a donor after all there's a way to do that right yeah there's actually living donor opportunities as well we currently have 10,000 Texans awaiting a life-saving transplant 85 percent of those or over 8,000 of them are for kidneys and those are situations where somebody if they felt compelled to be a living donor can uh, certainly do that and save the lives of their fellow Texans. Well, Chad, thank you so much for being here this morning. And it, we're glad we're already getting your phone calls right now. And we're going to go ahead and tell you a little bit right now about a San Antonio family who hopes their story will encourage others to give the gift of life. Uh, this is about 16-year-old Zach Baza. And without a donor, he wouldn't be alive today. Zach Baza is a pretty laid-back 16-year-old. I like to hang out with friends okay. and read books. Oh my gosh. His mom, Carmelita, can't believe he's made it this far. I'm so proud of him. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of where we are. Soon after Zach was born, doctors realized his liver was failing. At six months old, he needed a triple organ transplant, a new liver, small bowel, and pancreas. Doctors weren't sure if he'd live long enough to get them and prepared Carmelita for the worst. I didn't even know what to do. I was like, how do you, how do you make funeral arrangements for a baby? I mean, I just, it, it just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. In April of 2008, the family of a four-year-old who lost their life 
realized their child could live on in another. It would take me a while to find the words uh, other than thank you, and that's just so, just so incomplete, so inadequate, you know. A scar on Zach's stomach serves as a reminder of what he's overcome. I used to say that, um, I think, uh, I got cut with like a samurai sword <laughs> by an actual samurai. He doesn't remember what the start of his life was like, but Zach knows how he plans to live the rest of it. It's a blessing, basically. And it's it sounds unreal, but yeah. um, it's just um, that I'm grateful to have what I have. Danielle, graphic. Hi guys, well just wanted to see, there should be a number on your screen, that's 210-351-1363. And real quick, if you are busy, you can't make that phone call this morning, Chad, tell people how they can maybe look you all up later on. Sure, we'd encourage you to go to DonateLifeTexas.org, all one word, DonateLifeTexas.org. You can register there, you can check your registration and see if you are registered as a donor. You can edit your donation any way you want, and of course, find out great factual information about all things organ, eye, and tissue donation. So, donatelifetexas.org. All right. Thank you, Chad, and keep that in mind. And for now, let's go ahead and check the roadways with RJ. All right, thank you very much, Steph. So I want to give you an update here on a major crash that we have on the northeast side right now. Transguide, they went ahead and uh, changed the angle here of that camera that we're looking at. So what we're being told is that this is an 18-wheeler that apparently struck a barrier on the northbound lanes at Topper Wine. This is going to be right before the Pat Booker Road exit in the, uh, the Universal City, Live Oak, that whole area right now. So right now, 35, the big headline here, 35 is shut down. All main lanes of 35 have been shut down because of this 18-wheeler crash further up the road here, as we see here on on the northbound main lanes. Let's show you real quick the maps and see exactly what we're looking at here. So again, traffic is being shut down right there at Topper Wine Road. This crash being reported uh, as you, well actually as you just saw from that Transguide camera, a little bit further up the road here on 35 northbound. All traffic right now is being diverted on that Pat Booker Road exit. So even though that crash is in that area, all traffic being diverted right there at Topper Wine all the way up to Pat Booker Road. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get around this crash right now. And you do see that traffic is building all the way now past Judson Road, especially at this time in the morning. Uh, not uh, not looking good out there, but again, all northbound main lanes right there are shut down on the far northeast side because of an 18-wheeler crash. And again, from just kind of looking at it, it looks like it may have struck a barrier out there. Should be a little bit before they get things cleared out. So if you're heading out northeast side, this is basically what you need to know. 35 northbound shut down at Topper Wine Road. Mike, how are things looking outside? This oh, just grab a jacket. I mean, yeah, it's chilly out there. Hey, I, I mentioned this uh, just a couple of moments ago. Eclipse glasses giveaway that is going to be going on later on this afternoon, this evening. 5 to 7 p.m. Sarah and Mia are going to be there, 238 to Southwest Military. And you want to get there early because the line's going to start early and they only have a limited number. And then you get to meet, of course, those two very, very, very nice people, two of the nice people ever meet, Sarah and Mia. All right, clear skies out there. It is an absolutely spectacular morning. It's going to be a great day. Yesterday was just absolutely beautiful. Look at these numbers, though. 48 here in town, normal low temperature. We're almost 10 below normal right now. 41 in Kerrville. And there's a hint of a breeze. And well, just uh, just before I uh, came on the air, the wind chill, I know it's not a huge deal, but it's down to 39 in Kerrville. So, yeah, there's just a little bit of a, a bite to some of these temperatures with that breeze out there this morning. And, of course, we've got bone dry air in place. And actually, that the dew points have dropped down 12 degrees compared to this time yesterday, 16 degrees lower in New Braunfels. So that's how much the dry air has continued to pump on in here over the course of the past 24 hours. And that will continue to be the case throughout the day today, as well as overnight and tomorrow. So nothing's going to be changing for the next couple of days. We will start to see more humidity come in here as we go on in toward the weekend. I'm going for 45 when it's all said and done here in town because we've got clear skies. We've got dry air and basically no wind out there. So perfect radiational cooling situation. And then we warm up really quickly throughout the morning. We'll already make it up to 70 at noon. Add another 10 on top of that up to 80, which is pretty close to what you'd expect at this time of year. Now, the humidity, like I said, great for the next few days. Then it starts to come back in here. Saturday is going to be humid. We get a front moving through. The humidity is going to drop down briefly on Sunday, and then it comes right back in here on Monday. We get a little bit of clearing right here on Sunday. 
and wouldn't you know it with this extra humidity coming on in here we will have some clouds hanging around here on monday as well uh, it's not completely socked in but again to be perfectly honest we can't really get a good grip on what the cloud cover, cover is going to be until we get those short range m computer models to come into play and that's not going to happen until really this weekend so it's just as what it looks like right now in the long range models next few days fantastic chance of rain late saturday we stay in the 60s 83 on sunday and yes there will be some clouds few little you know thinner spots here and there on monday and then we do have another chance of rain on tuesday a whole lot more after this stick around in today's Tech Bytes, Amazon is walking away from one of its checkout features. The company is getting rid of the Just Walk Out technology at its U.S. grocery stores, which uses cameras and sensors to charge customers. Experts say the system is incredibly expensive to install and maintain. That technology will be replaced by self-checkout kiosks. Microsoft is reportedly testing a new chatbot for Xbox powered by artificial intelligence. Reports say the feature is meant to answer questions and even process refunds funds from Microsoft support website. Finally, reading the morning paper will never be the same again. The New York Times will reportedly begin offering an option to listen to articles using a voice generated by AI. According to Axios, 10% of the paper's website, news app, and audio app users will gain access this week. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 529, 49 degrees just ahead. We'll check in on our Texas Organ Sharing Alliance phone bank, which is live this morning, 351-1363. We're showing just how important a life-saving organ donation can be. Stay with us and help us save some lives this morning. I'm going to switch places with Stephanie Cerna, and we'll be right back. Good morning. It is April 3rd. We hope you're having a good week so far. Uh, weather, you know, during the day has been nice and lovely. Oh, yes. yeah. Yesterday, except for the, I mean, it did get a little bit windy at times, and now the wind has settled down, and it is, it, it's cold out there. I mean, there's no getting around it. We have temperatures that are almost 10 degrees below normal right now. And uh, as you can see, the, the skyline, look at how crisp and clear this picture is. We couldn't even hardly see any of these buildings yesterday with all that humidity around here. But I mean, when you can even see the color of the buildings just a little bit, that's a good indication that we've got some really, really dry air. So visibility is just fantastic out there. And it is going to be a spectacular sunrise. We're at 48 right now. Normal low temperatures, mid leaning toward upper 50s, dew points at 40. So we still have some pretty dry air. There's still a pretty good difference between those two numbers. Light or no wind to speak of, and of course all those clear skies. So we'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches as the the morning rolls on. 41 right now in Kerrville, 52 out there at Port of Look at there's only on this map one, two, three readings that are still in the 50s. Everybody else has dropped into the 40s right now. Like I said, we're not done cooling down at as of yet, we'll still lose a few more degrees. Oak, just I, yesterday we were all thinking that maybe some of the rain was going to wash that out of the atmosphere. Nope, we were wrong at 21,380. Needless to say, this is the heart of the oak season around here. Mold, pecan, and grass are all on the low side. Throughout the day, yeah, just a spectacular, prize-winning, fantastic, whatever adjective you want to use. It is going to be a great day out there. Plenty of sunshine, and we're going to gain... 35 degrees on average from the low to the high today, so big warm up. Do it again tomorrow. Do it again on Friday. We'll talk about the weekend. We'll take a look ahead to uh, Eclipse Monday as well, coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, huge problems out there, right? All right, yeah, Mike, not a way to start our Wednesday morning, especially for our drivers on the northeast side. I mean, we're already used to the, all the construction taking place there in the southbound lanes, but what you're looking at are the northbound lanes right now. 35 out there at Topper Wine. You see the flares here, so 35 is completely shut down in this area right now. So 35 at Topper Wine, and that is due to an 18 wheeler that uh, reportedly struck a barrier for further up the northbound lanes here, closer to Pat Booker Road. So let's show you a map here real quick, exactly what we're looking at. So we saw this crash earlier from a different angle. It's out, out here in this area, right there, right at that Universal City kind of Live Oak area. But again, traffic being shut down right now at Topper Wine. All traffic right now is being diverted to Pat Booker Road though, because that's the main exit that's gonna come out there. So again, even though we have that crash in that area, traffic is still being diverted to Pat Booker Road to get around here. Again, a reported 18-wheeler, uh, 
reportedly struck a barrier there. So we will continue to get more information as we make our way through. We want to take you to the other side of town because we do have a rollover crash that's being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. This is at Loop 1604 just past Bandera Road on the eastbound lanes right there in that uh, north side activities complex area, the Dub Ferris area. So keep this one in mind if you're heading out. It does not appear to be causing too many traffic delays. Again, biggest thing we're seeing right now, 35 northbound at Topper Wine shut down because of an 18 wheeler that reportedly struck a barrier. Take caution if you are headed out into this area. Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, RJ. Well, with a life saving organ transplant, one person has the ability to save up to eight lives, restore sight to two people, and heal the lives of more than 75 people. So there are 10,000 Texans on the national transplant waiting list. So let's go ahead and check in with Mark, who is now in Studio B with the Organ Sharing Alliance phone bank going on right now. Hey, Mark. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. I, I, you know what? I've been doing this morning show a long, long time, and I can't rem ever remember doing a live phone bank this early. And we're so thankful for all of you that have woke up early and come in and all the way down to KSAT. And if you want to say good morning to everybody, please feel free. One, two, three. Good See, they're awake. And so we want to put them to work here. We know you have questions about becoming a donor or even even a living donor. And I didn't know this. When you think about organ donations, you think about hearts and kidneys, but I didn't know that the other organs that could be donated are the pancreas, lungs, liver, and intestines. And then among the tissues that could be donated, the corneas, eyes, skin, bone, heart valves, veins, and tendons. I had no idea that some of those were on the list. But today is all about educating everyone today. And we're also going to be talking to people about how organ donation changes so many lives and has become a passion. We're going to talk to someone who knows firsthand that registering to become a donor uh, is a for an important first step. This person sh hopes that by sharing her daughter's bittersweet journey to become an organ donor, that she will show others how their gracious gifts help men, women, and children who are waiting for a second chance at life. Lolly Gomez has been advocating as a TOSA volunteer for the past 20 years. Talking to people about how becoming an organ donor can change lives is her passion. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of misconceptions about um, becoming an organ donor. Yeah. And some, you know, we try to get those answered for the potential donor registered. Um, and after hearing the answer, then it gives them peace of mind to sign to become a registered donor. Her support for organ, tissue, and eye donation started on June 28, 2003, when she was approached by members from the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance, or TOSA, to see if she would consider donating her daughter's organs. My daughter was 20 years old. She loved life and lived life to the fullest. At that age, you know, they want to just do what they want to do. And um, because of that, um, you know, I respected her wishes. Yvette was preparing for a weekend volleyball tournament. And the Wednesday before the game, Lolly talked with Yvette about how she planned to get there. She said she arranged for a friend to pick her up, but something about that moment didn't feel right with Lolly. She wanted to eat enchiladas before she went to play her, her tournament. So we were in the kitchen cooking, and uh, something in me just told me to say these words. And I'm a big believer of signs. Not knowing that that was gonna be my sign, to her from God, um, I asked her um, that I did not want her to go on the motorcycle to the volleyball tournament or come back with her friend on the motorcycle um, because I was afraid to get that call that no mom would want to ever get. There was a family softball game on the Friday before Yvette's volleyball tournament. Lala remembers the fun and excitement everyone was having, but she also remembers the small spat before Yvette left with her friend to the tournament. Friday night we played softball, um, and she went about her merry way. Uh, she did leave a little angry, um, although because she wanted to play catcher. I was playing the, the role as a catcher on the softball team. So we placed her to play um, outfield. So she was still a little upset at me at the end of the game, but nevertheless, we hugged and said goodbye, be careful. Um, little did I know that that was the last time I was going to see her alive. During the early morning on June 28, 2003, Lolly received the phone call she dreaded. 
On the other line was Yvette's best friend trying to explain what happened. At 2.30 in the morning, and that's the exact time that I had that talk with her on that Wednesday, is I didn't want to get that phone call at 2 or 2.30 in the morning. Um, and I did. I received that call about 2.30 in the morning on Saturday morning after our um, softball game on Friday night. And uh, it was her best friend crying, telling me that she had been injured and for me to rush to Bamsey Hospital. Upon arriving, um, the doctors did gather the family and give us the news that she was brain dead. Becoming an organ donor wasn't something Yvette had always thought about or even discussed with her family. She had not made that to be her, her wish to be a donor. So we talked to, I'll never forget his name, his name was Mike, and uh, he explained to us what TOSA did and what the statistics were about organ and tissue and eye donation. It was immediately a yes for our family. And that is how I became involved. My daughter saved five lives. Lolly's beautiful, free-spirited daughter, Yvette, who lived the life to the fullest, changed the lives of five other people. Through the gift of organ donation, Yvette became a heart, lung, kidney, and pancreas donor. Lolly says she still keeps in touch with the people who received her daughter's heart and lungs. The recipients are like extended family members to Lolly and her family, and she's comforted to know that her daughter's donations has given each recipient a second chance at life, allowing them to reach milestones in their lives. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that we were able to provide a second chance of life to those have, that have received her organs. Yvette continues to touch the lives of people who know her story. Lolly personally acknowledges the importance of becoming an organ donor. She's registered now, but says it wasn't until after her daughter's accident. I am a registered donor, and I became a registered donor after my daughter's accident. Um, it changed the perspective for the entire family and friends, co-workers, strangers, you know, so um, it did, it did changes. It did see us. Um, we did learn a lot and we're still learning, you know, because every every day is a learning day. Yvette is Lolly's only daughter. She admits sharing her story is painful, but it gives her and the family joy to know Yvette's life still lives on in others. For Lolly, reaching just one person and changing their mind about becoming a registered organ and tissue donor brings her the greatest satisfaction. I would like to encourage the public to please sign up to become a registered donor. It has meant the world of difference to our family. It allows us to heal at the same time. And uh, you just never know whose life you will change. All right, we're back live here in KSAT Studio B. And again, the, the, the operators are standing by waiting to take your call. We've already received a number of calls. The number is 210-351-1363. If you're too busy trying to get the kids out the door or wake them up this morning, this phone bank's going to be up and running all the way through 10 o'clock this morning. And we come back here live in the studio. I even got a sneak peek at their Fiesta medal this morning. It's kind of nice looking. And there's one another one of our calls. But this phone bank going on, we'll be talking to one of our special guests coming up in moments. Right now, it is 543. And we're in the upper 40s out there right now. It is a cold Wednesday morning. Let's take a live look outside with live cam as you wake up on a Wednesday with GMSA. Welcome back to GMSA. Trying something different this morning. We usually do phone banks here at KSAP, but they're usually in the afternoon and the evening. So this morning, GMSA is running an organ donation, basically a Q&A. We could take your questions all morning long, and we're getting phone calls right now. 351-1363, this phone bank running through 10 o'clock this morning. And Chad Carroll is with us this morning. He's with Donate Life Texas. Chad, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. So what is something that people are surprised when they call something? like this what are they surprised to maybe find out that they didn't know before I think for a lot of people there's myths out there I think you mentioned in the last segment about some of the things they can sign up and register to donate 
You know, with one donor can save eight people's lives via organ donation, and you can improve or heal the lives of 75 more with tissue cornea donation. I think a lot of people are surprised on what they can donate. I think a lot of folks are also surprised by the number of Texans awaiting a life-saving transplant. We have 10,000 of our fellow Texans awaiting a life-saving transplant. That's a big number. That's a lot of folks, and we know we can make the choice on our driver's license for to make a donation if we unfortunately pass away, but coming a little bit later on, you and I are going to be talking more about living donations, which is just just as important, is it not? It is. Okay, we're going to be talking about that coming up. Again, 351-1363, the number to call. Yeah, and we're even taking your calls during the commercial breaks, of course. And for more information, visit ksatcommunity.com. Right now, it's just about 548, and the other big story this morning is the traffic. We've got a major issue out in northbound 35 at Topperwine. Looks like things have changed, though. Maybe they just opened those lanes back up. We're getting an update from RJ coming up. All right, 551 right now. Welcome to Good Morning San Antonio. And uh, things are looking a little bit better on the northeast side right now. We have at least opened up the main lanes of I-35 there at Topper Wine, but you do see here as Trans Guy kind of gives us a wider shot of the situation out here. There was an 18-wheeler that reportedly struck a barrier, and now they uh, look like they're giving us all sorts of different angles here. So let's go straight to our maps because, again, the good news is that I-35 northbound, it looks like that has reopened at least on the main lanes, but that exit ramp there at Pat Booker Road, Universal City, and uh, Live Oak looks like that is still closed at the moment as it looks like crews have gotten that 18 wheeler at least off of the main lanes there but we still see some pretty heavy traffic going all the way back to Judson Road again northbound 35 at uh, Topper Wine Road and Judson Road keep that one in mind we do have a crash being reported Foster Road this is going to be off of I-10 on the far east side so not causing any major delays at the moment it's something to keep in mind our other rollover crash there at Bandera Road and 1604 that has been cleared out according to the San Antonio Fire Department page so really kind of Again, the biggest thing we're seeing right now is some of this slowdown here at 35 at Topper Wine. But some good news is that at least we have northbound the main lanes back are, are back open for our drivers in that area. All right, Mike, it was feeling a little bit chilly outside yeah. this morning. How are things looking right now? I, you, more of the same. And I was going to say not many more times this season we're going to be saying grab a jacket, <laughs> you know, because it's cold out there. Uh, yesterday, beautiful sunrise. But notice how, of course, we had that leftover, you know, some of the leftover humidity and the cloud cover looking off to the east. That's not going to be the situation this morning. As a matter of fact, once again, look at the skyline out there. Just, I mean, you can just count every little light in every window just about on all the buildings downtown. This is the camera from uh, Brook City Base looking up to the north. So a lot of dry air in place uh, down here at the surface as well as upstairs. 41 Kerrville, that's the cold spot right now. And at one point, the wind chill was actually down to 39. 48 here in town. We will drop down a couple of more notches. We hardly have any breeze out there, as you saw the clear skies and very dry air with dew points in the 30s and 40s around here. And this is also going to be sticking around too. the humidity is going to be waiting a few days to come back in here. So great stretch of weather. This is what it looks like upstairs in the atmosphere. Uh, no, here's you can see where a little bit of moisture goes off into the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But when you have this dark shade of gray and even sort of uh, almost a little bit of a tannish brownish shade, that just means that not only down here at the surface, but also you go up a few thousand feet in the atmosphere and the air is very, very dry. So we're going to have, once again, those just intensely beautiful blue skies out there. Temperatures, I'm going for 45 when it's all said and done. So on average, 10 degrees below normal and then plenty of sunshine throughout the day. We warm up very quickly this morning, 70 thanks to the dry air and light wind in place. And when it's all said and done, we're going to gain 35 degrees on average around the area, getting up to 80 for a high temperature. All right, jump ahead to the weekend. We do have a few showers around here on Saturday. The humidity is going to come back into the picture. And then with the front that moves on through, maybe in the wee hours Sunday morning, will continue to then maybe clear a little bit by Sunday. Slight drop in, in humidity on Sunday, but that's going to come right back in here. Now, I want to jump ahead to Monday. There are going to be plenty of clouds around here, but this is not like it's just socked in with clouds. But to get a really good grasp on the, it's not going to look like today. I mean, if we had the eclipse today, it'd be fantastic weather. There are going to be plenty of clouds around, but again, we've been saying leading up to this, we've got to wait till the weekend till we can get into those short range computer models to really get a good grasp on what the cloud cover picture is going to look like. You know, it's going to be a lot of low clouds, it's going to be just some high thin clouds out there. So again, that's going to be coming in toward the weekend. Next few days, perfect. Saturday, a couple of showers late in the day, a little more humidity, some sunshine Sunday, and yeah, there's going to be 
Looking right now, decent amount of clouds on Monday. A whole lot more after this. Good morning. Well, welcome back. Here's a live look. This is our volunteers here taking your phone calls. They're with the Texas Oregon Sharing Alliance, and they have been here bright and early this morning. They're still waiting to take your call. Now, just remember, if you'd like to sign up to be a donor or if you just have questions about it, that number is on your screen. And quickly, look, a look out there with Transguide. RJ has been talking about this all morning. Still problems there at I-35 at Topper Wine. We'll get you updated when we come back.